church and everyone watching, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us for our Good Friday service. And in a moment, our senior pastor is going to share a, a very powerful word. But right now, it is Good Friday even as we consider what the Lord has done for us. His death, His suffering. You know, He suffered so that we could live. He died so that we could have everlasting life. And we're going to worship God together. And wherever you are, why don't you sing along and join in the song.
soul now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor to thee one more time oh that rocket cross my salvation where your blood poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor to thee we praise you lord oh you are worthy of all praise come on bless his name with all that's within me you are worthy of all praise thank you lord so that we could be made whole. Lord, we know that by your stripes, we are healed, Lord. Lord, in the midst of what's going on in the world, Lord, Father, in the midst of this outbreak of this virus, Father, we pray that your healing power will take place, Lord. Father, your protection cover each and every one of us with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are indeed worthy of all praise because of what you did, Jesus Christ. Now we are reconnected with the Father. My sins have been washed away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you for this love, Lord. And thank you for the new piercing. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. cross, the great exchange took place, Lord. You took our sin, Lord, and you washed it away, and you gave us life. You took our pain, Lord, and you gave us healing. You took away our fear, and you gave us peace. You took away our pain, and you gave us joy. And you remind us, Lord, that whatever circumstances that we are currently facing, it does not change the fact that you are a good Father. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Harvest Clang, and hit the notification bell to receive updates on new videos. Hi Church, we are so glad you are joining us here online for the Easter weekend. And uh, before we go into the Word, we have a couple of things to just remind you. Number one, we want you to remain connected. So whether it's via social media to all our links or to a cell group, we highly encourage you to contact somebody or connect with somebody. A cell group leader will be so happy um, to welcome you into the group. Um, restricted movement does doesn't mean restricted connection. So it's so important that our cell groups meeting online now everywhere through Zoom or WhatsApp. Just get connected with somebody. Don't go through this season alone. Also, we encourage you to give your tithes and your offering online via bank transfer. All our details of our accounts will be on the screen right now. It's at Public Bank and the account number is there should you wish to give unto the Lord. We cannot wait. We are counting down the days until we get to see you physically again in church. But for now, this is the church and this is the church in action. And we are so happy you are joining us this weekend. So now we're going to pass the time to Pastor for a word of encouragement for you and your family. Hi everyone. Good evening to everyone who is listening in. Good Friday service coming to you online. This is our first time under the present circumstances that our nation is facing that we have to uh, record this. We can no longer do this in church due to the MCO. But nevertheless, it's so good to see each and every one of you this evening. This is Good Friday service. Christmas is about the birth of Christ. Good Friday is about the death of Christ. Resurrection or Easter Sunday is about the resurrection of Christ. And Ascension Day is about Christ going back to heaven. Now this evening, i like to uh, bring a text. And that is, in light of what's happening in this nation and also in the world, i like to bring a topic on why or when God is silent. Let me begin with a scripture. Psalms 21, verse 1 and 2. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning, my God, my God, I cry out by day, you do not answer me. And then in Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, Jesus prayed this prayer when he was hung on the cross. Before he gave up his spirit, he cried out the same prayer, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Now, coming back to the Lord's cry, my God, my God. I don't think he was raising a theological issue, but he looked down to the abyss and found a total darkness that spiritually and totally engulfed him. It wasn't only darkness on the outside, but it was also darkness on the inside. And yet, in the midst of all that, God was silent. Sometimes we feel like that. Charles Swindoll once said, Who of us has not longed for a word from God? Search for a glimpse of His power. Yearn for the assurance of His presence. And only later we realize how very present God was. So my friends, when you think God is silent, 
and you feel his absence. Trust in his presence. Let me start with the first point, and that is when God is silent. Sometimes we feel that when God is silent, he's so far away from us. But when God is silent, he is not absent. Sometimes God chooses to be silent. He was there with the two disciples on the road to Damascus, silent but present. It's the silence of a friend sitting next to us when we are grieving. It's the silence of a mother while nursing her baby. It's the silence of a father when the son choose to rebel. As in the case of the prodigal son, the father was silent. So this evening, God may be silent in the midst of all that is taking place in this world. But I can assure you, he is not absent. He is very much with us. In fact, he has promised that he will be with us until the end of the world. So my brothers and sisters, be encouraged. You may feel the silence of God in your life right now. Where is God in the midst of all this? Let me assure you, He is present. Secondly, when God is silent, you realize that there was a gap in the New Testament. The Bible, uh, most commentators uh, believe there was uh, a 400 years gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There was no prophet, there was no prophecy, there was no word from God during those 400 years. And then we read in the Matthew Gospel, suddenly God began to speak again. He, wasn't si he was silent the 400 years, but he was very much present. When Caiaphas, the high priest, pressed Jesus for an answer, he was silent. Sometimes God chooses to be silent when we ask the wrong question. When Pilate pressed Jesus for an answer, he too answer him not a word. Sometimes we not only ask the wrong question, we have the wrong concern. The disciples in a storm, when Jesus was very much with them in a boat, asleep, silent, but very much present. How are we to make sense of God's silence in a world where everything is falling apart. May God help us to understand that he may be silent, but he is very much present. Secondly, he may be silent, but he is not idle. We read in the book of Esther, there is no mention of God no mention of prayers, no mention of miracles, no mention of healing, no mention of prophecy. God seems to be silent. God seems to be so absent. But yet, when we read the book of Esther, we realize that he was not idle. He was working behind the scene, preparing Esther to save her people. That's why Esther came up with the famous phrase, for such a time like this, God has sent me to preserve a nation. Similarly, we should ask ourselves this question, God, where are you in all this? Where are you when the nation seems to be getting out of control? 
Some of us are perplexed. Where is God? Where's the hand of God? And perhaps unseen to us, God is preparing the stage for his next move. Finally, he may be silent, but he is not indifferent. Where is God when Jesus was on the cross? Abandoned is a strong word. The feeling of being abandoned when darkness engulfed him as the sins of the world came upon him. Sometimes we do get a feeling that God doesn't seem to care. St. Augustine once said, Our Lord was indifferent to the woman of Canaan when she pressed him for healing. Augustine said this, Our Lord wasn't indifferent at the woman's request, nor to refuse his mercy, but to increase her desire for it. And then we get this idea, like the disciples, don't you care we drown? We get this feeling when a Canaanite mother cried, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus did not answer a word. Mary and Martha probably felt the same. My brother would not have died if you have been here. Later, Mary picked it up and said the same thing. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So sometimes we get this feeling when we are living in a time where everything seems to spin out of control. Locked down for four weeks, unthinkable, unimaginable. The COVID-19 is still rapidly spreading. God, why hast thou forsaken us? Not yet, my friends, not yet. He may be silent, but he is present. He may be silent, but not idle. God is working behind the scene. This will soon be over, and we will begin to see the perfect and the sovereign will of God and purpose in our life. He may be silent, but definitely not indifferent. He still provides, he still protects, he still works in our midst. So my brothers and sisters, wherever you are listening this from, I want to assure you, God may appear silent, but he is very much present with us. Allow me at this time to pray with you. Father, I pray for all those who are watching in. Some of us who may feel, Lord, where are you at this point? Some of us may feel abandoned. Some of us may feel forsaken even. But Lord, whoever that is listening in this evening, whatever state and situation they may be in, I pray your spirit will reach out to them. Because your word has declared you will never leave us or forsake us. We may not understand what we are going through right now, where everything seems to be out of control. And this crisis seems to be increasing strength by the day. But we know you who sits on the throne is very much present with us. And so God, show your hand, show your sovereign will to each and every one of us in the coming days that we will begin to understand that you are so much with us in this crisis. For this we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. 
Okay, I trust that uh, everyone here, as we have informed you earlier, in uh, that uh, we will have communion uh, this Good Friday. So, can you get ready the emblems, the cup and the bread if you can. And as we hold this in our hand, to observe the Lord's uh, table, communion, and uh, in obedience to God's word, we are told that we are supposed to observe this as often as we can. And what better day than to do it on Good Friday, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? And uh, his body was broken for us as symbolized in this broken bread and his blood was shed for us. And uh, before we do that, we just pray first. Father, we thank you that on this Good Friday, we are able to partake the bread and the cup and in obedience to your word that declares that this is a new covenant. Lord, you promise us a new relationship, a new day, a new covenant. And as we pick, take this bread and drink of this cup, Lord, as your people do this in faith and in obedience. Bless every household, bless everyone who is doing this, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a bread. In the same manner, let's drink the cup. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, May the Lord lift up His countenance and shine on you. May the Lord smile on you. May the Lord watch your going in and your coming out. May the Lord's favor be upon you. May He touch His angels over you in the days to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Church. Thank you for watching and tuning in. And uh, we hope that our service has blessed you. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell uh, so that you can receive more updates. And we pray that the Spirit of the Lord will bless you wherever you are this morning that the sermon and the message has blessed you and encouraged you in this trying time this nation is going through. Thank you.